when we're coming to reincarnation, this was my thought. Okay, I've seen enough evidence through my life that, yeah, the reincarnation of consciousness is real. It happens. Past lives, I get that. But where do we get the perception of time from? From the matrix. It's feeding us a perception of time. That's why when people have near-death experiences, they say that basically the, the realm that they went into was like a different... The laws of physics were different. The feeling of time was different. Yeah. Back in um, just after the turn of the millennium, I had one of these big downloads at the time, which said to me so powerfully, this is a simulation. And the limit of the simulation at this level is the speed of light. And also that what we call the laws of physics are actually the encoded laws of the simulation. So if you are a creator of a virtual reality game, you encode into it the limits of the game, so they play to your rules. And the characters, uh, the non-player characters play to the rules, but also the human players play within those rules. That's the laws of physics. That's what they are. So when you, you have near-death experiences and they leave the body, they talk about a reality which responds to a different law of physics. Yes, because it's a different level of the matrix with a different intent. So this was my question. Okay, I accept reincarnation, I get that, but I do not buy for a second the idea that it has to happen so we learn lessons to reach a point of enlightenment. You know, when you come into this world, what happens? You're going to learn new lessons on top of what you've already learned? No, you get a mind wipe. You can't remember the previous ones. You're starting from scratch again, overwhelmingly, certainly consciously. And therefore, what's all this lesson learning bit all about? I remember when, when I had that ayahuasca experience in a rainforest in Brazil in 2003, and this took a female form, this female voice, real powerful, spoke to me for five hours about the nature of reality. At one point, I was shown this picture of a field an English rural field. And there was a, a path going across it, like a muddy path. And then suddenly people started falling out of the sky onto this path and they were walking down this path. And then they were wearing the path away. And as it wore away, it morphed into the grooves of one of the old vinyl record discs. And people were walking in the dark through these basically little tunnels in the vinyl disc. And the theme of it was people drop in to the system so easily because they've done it so many times before. It's second nature to them. They're not having to be brought into the system. They're already in it when they come in. And so the question was, okay, I can understand how consciousness could be enticed, tricked into entering this world. Okay, I can accept that. But then I look around the world and, you know, there's a few people that think they're doing all right, money-wise and all that stuff. But, you know, if you travel the world, I've been to about 60-odd countries over the last 34 years, you see that the vast majority of people are living a daily struggle to survive, not least in Africa, in Asia, in South America, in Central America, and so on. And they're not having a good time. It's a constant battle. You've got kids in mines and stuff, trawling for the resources that end up in electric car batteries and so on. So they're not having a good time. So my question was, I can understand why people would get enticed in once. <laughs> oh yeah. But coming back over and over and over again, are you having a bloody laugh? What? I'm going back there. Horrible, that is. So how do they do it? This is the astral level of the simulation. It's what people call the spirit world. But it's not the spirit world. That's beyond the simulation, the infinity of all things, everything that is, has been, and ever could be. You're entering, when you leave the body, another level of the simulation. Now, it can't just be a mirror 
of this because it wouldn't work. It has to be the appearance initially of some kind of heaven type place. So you, you, you enter a completely different reality. And I've read so many near death experiences accounts and very often they'll say, I felt a love like a bliss, like I've never felt before. And you go, you learn about, you know, reincarnation and all that. So, oh yeah, reincarnation. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you've done this many times. Oh yeah. So why was it a bliss you've never felt before? You must have experienced it many times because of the mind wipe. It's a perception wipe. And so what you're met with uh, are like passed over loved ones, spiritual masters, elders, spirit guides and all this stuff. And it's all very nice. It's all very spiritual. It is for the great majority of people. Some people have a bad experience as well. And you get drawn up the tunnel or some other symbol. And then you cross the threshold and they say, oh, either you've got to go back, your mission is not complete, or if you cross the threshold, if you choose not to go back, then you can't go back when you pass the threshold. Well, because near-death experiences all come back, they can't tell you what's on the other side of the threshold. But I've quoted in uh, the dream some people who say, and I do believe they're genuine, they have memories of the, pre, the pre-incarnation state. You know, it's a lot of people uh, been taken back through hypnosis into that between human life state, you know, beyond the threshold. And it sounds incredibly hierarchical and it sounds very technological. And something about the, the, the astral, you, you think of the astral and you think ethereal, but things like ghosts seem ethereal to us because they're not on the same frequency we are. But if you were on the frequency they're on, i.e. the astral frequency in this case, then they'd look as solid as you and me. And the astral is far more like this reality than people believe it to be, I would suggest. And therefore, this is in so many ways a projection of that astral frequency. It's certainly a projection from it. And for me, AI, or uh, artificial intelligence is running the whole of the simulation and it's running it people aren't pressing buttons and all that stuff except in detail it, overwhelmingly it is AI that's running it and what we're seeing now is in our human world we're seeing more and more and more cutting edge levels from our perspective anyway of AI technology coming into our reality. It's taking over our reality. And that is simply an expression of astral AI, which is running the whole show. And it's moving more and more into this realm to control us more and more fiercely here. And just to finish the point of how I'm seeing these things, I read so often over the years that To become enlightened, you have to go beyond mind. All these different spiritual expressions talk about going beyond mind. So mind is the barrier to enlightenment. It's like when people say, okay, just take a step back and observe your own thoughts. Observe your own chatter, mind chatter. And you can, you can, you can just sit and observe and you realize this mind chatter is not actually part of you, consciousness, the real I. So my question was, okay, you've got to get across this mind, yeah, to get enlightenment, yeah, yeah. But what the hell is mind then? What is it? What is this barrier you talk about? And this is what I conclude in the in the dream that what we call mind is AI and it's an AI program running through the biological computer and it's the biological computer through the five senses that locks us into the matrix at this level of the matrix if you only are driven you're perceptually driven 
only by mind, then when you leave the womb, when you leave this reality, is already known. It's a program. You're going to go through a program. And the AI is going to run you. It's going to run you. And so the only way, the way to override the program of mind is to expand beyond that perceptual program and let your true eye come in, consciousness. And what happens is, and this is awakening, this is what we call awakening, once you let consciousness in, then it sees things that the AI mind is programmed not to see, because I don't want you to see it. And to awaken is to awaken from this AI mind.